Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily and um, welcome to this gentleman sitting next to me, John McEwen. Uh, John, the reason we're chatting today is you've just done uh, a pretty hard route on the Grand Capistan called the Bois Petit uh, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. But first of all, who are you and what do you do in Chamonix? Uh, I'm John McEwen and I, I work as a guide here in Chamonix. Um, I've been here kind of full time for the last three, four years. Um, since I got my full qualification, so just working away and climbing whatever I can. You're someone who, on social media, it always seems like you're doing something super hard, super gnarly, when no one else is climbing. Uh, what's motivating you at the moment to sort of keep pushing yourself uh, and keep getting out there and just keep trying stuff? I, I think um, partly the random climate we've had in the last few years. Like I've been, like last winter in February, did some really fun routes up in the granite. Amazing crack climbing when everyone else was skiing, but we had like two weeks of perfect dry weather. So it was super fun to ski into routes, climb the cracks and then ski back out. And oh, it was just really fun conditions. And it's always fun to be doing climbing when nobody else is and nobody else believes it's possible. <laughs> Talk about no one else being here. We're at a deserted crag right now, but there are cars going past. So it was a bit noisy, I do apologize about that. We've had to grab John quickly because he's off to America. John, tell me about the Vuapiti, first of all, because let's talk about grades, just for people who don't know that route. It's on the Grand Capistan, uh, and it's sort of a fairly standout line on that mountain. Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing line right up the middle. Um, I mean, you've got the Benati route, which goes up the front and goes through the huge big roofs and the most hanging, overhanging bit of the wall, and it kind of weaves through all these ledges. And that's, that's an amazing line in itself, but the, the Voie Petit is just, I guess, the, the most direct line straight up, up that face. And when it was put up, it was, it was difficult at the time and it still remains quite difficult because what's the crux of it? Is it 8B or 8B plus, the actual yeah, crux section? I don't know if it's 8A plus or 8B, but um, yeah, it's quite a, quite a big number. And um, I guess the, the main thing is, is climbing that sort of difficulty at altitude. Um, when it all comes down to it, I guess you're you're breathing hard and you're you're in a mountain environment, so it's I guess that adds as as much as anything to the the hardness of the route. People I know who have done this route have, have had this as a project for quite a while, and I know the logistics of it are tricky because we're talking way up on the midi. You know, it, it's out there. It's not like just going down to your local crag and trying something hard. Yeah. It, how how did you logistically work it in terms of working those pitches and knowing that you can do it? Um, so I, last year, I guess, was the first time I thought maybe I should think about trying it. Um, so I went up with um, Callum and Johnny um, one day and we, we just climbed the... We wanted to see what the crux pitch felt like if there were... I wanted to see if there were holes on it and if it was something that I could maybe get stronger for. So we just climbed up the direct um, to Capucin uh, and then traversed into the crux pitch and we kind of each had a go each. And then there was a big thunderstorm, so we came down. Um, but that was a good, good time just to have a play and see. And I, you know, I was surprised there were holes up there. It was kind of steep through the roof, but kind of felt like with a bit of training and a bit more power, I could definitely come back and do it. So, yeah, that was the first stage. Um, but that was a, that was like uh, last July or something, so quite a while ago. Uh, and then this summer I was going to try and do it but I just ended up working loads but I guess I had it in my in the back of my mind all summer to try and I saved a, a little bit of time off in September um, and that was my my goal at the end of the summer to try and keep a little bit of fitness up through the summer do a little bit of training at the end of work and um, try and be strong enough. You weren't just up there with partners though. didn't you rope solo it and, and try it like that it's got to be a bit lonely up there high up on a rope by yourself working this difficult section. How, how do you keep motivated for something like that? Well, that, I mean, I, I did, I had two days on it um, that week with, with a, a guy called Tom. Um, and that was where I kind of figured out how to do the, the crux pitch. Um, and like, just get that dialed. Then we went one pitch further and there was a 7C plus that I couldn't really do. And it was kind of late in the day, we were a bit cold and um, just psych wasn't that high so we came off and then 
I really felt like it's not going to happen this year. That's that's it, game over. Um, I can't find anyone to come up here with. It's uh, it's like a, the window is getting closer to 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 autumn when everything's going to get cold and too snowy. Uh, I also had to go to work again. So then I thought I could probably get up there and on the same way, but just by rope soling up the direct Capucin and then swing over into that pitch. And just if I can figure out how to do that pitch, then maybe that'll be a game changer. Um, and it was, so it was just swinging around and on the Grigri and um, the Revo, just got the rope up and then abseil down the pitch and was able to figure it all out on on, the, on abseil and figure out where the little, little holes were. And, and yeah, then whenever I came back to do it, that pitch felt fine at the first go. So. Okay, so you worked it, you knew that it was possible at least for you. That decision to go for the send, uh, were you expecting to get it done fairly quickly or, or did you know you'd have to spend a little time on the wall working it? I mean, how did you approach that, those couple of days when you climbed it? Um, so when I, when I walked back out um, from the, the day I was, I'd rope soldered up there, I uh, met Freya, who was, she'd climbed the Benati route with Heather and they were walking back to the station. I basically I needed a beeler, <laughs> and uh, and Freya seemed psyched. She was she's always up for whatever, up for an adventure. So um, yeah, I thought if I can get all the way up that section, do the crux, do that seven C, and then there's a seven B to the ledge, then we can bivouac in the ledge. So there's a big um, ledge, maybe like two thirds up. And then I hadn't been on any of the final pitches and there's still one 8 pitch up there. So I thought if I get a good night's sleep on that ledge, I can figure out how to do the rest in the morning and hopefully it should all go. And it, and it did? And it did, yeah. Yeah, I actually, I actually went up the 8A pitch that evening. When we got on the ledge, we had a cup of tea and then I just went up and put the clips in so that I could um, and figure out a little bit of the beta. And then the next morning, figured it out a little bit more and, and did it and then just did all those pitches to the top. And gear-wise, uh, it's sort of mixed, so a few bolts and a bit few cams. Yeah. yeah, all the crux pitches are bolted where it's really hard, and then you just need a bit of kit to back them up sometimes. The easier pitches are pretty spicy. Um, a lot of the seven, grade seven pitches are kind of you know, quite, quite run out, but yeah, I guess it's um, adds to the route. If you're, if you're there to climb it B, then the easier bits can be a bit spicy. Um, now look, you work as a mountain guide um, it, and it's something you obviously do every single day. But I think what's tricky for a lot of people is, you know, some people could perhaps climb the grades that are similar to where you are, but they kind of look at the logistics of it, they look at the effort required to climb these routes in the big mountains. How do you suggest that people start going about kind of putting their sights on bigger objectives up in the mountains. Is there a path to that? Or is it just a case of, of almost doing an apprenticeship and learning as you go? Yeah, it's definitely a, an apprenticeship. And But I mean, w essentially when you get on the Grand Cap, once you got there, which is pretty easy to get to, it's just a, a glacier hike. Um, but once you're there, really, it's just, I mean, it's, it's cragging. It's got bolted belays, it's got good rock and it, Thunderstorms, you just abseil back down and you're on the glacier again. Um, so it's not, I mean, it's like the least committing alpine climbing you can do. And, and at the moment, that's why I quite like it, because it's, <laughs> it's just climbing good rock and it's not dangerous and it's not going to fall down. So, yeah. <laughs> and the summer Chamonix season is kind of coming to an end now. I know you're off uh, to America very soon. What's your plans for the next couple of months in terms of climbing or working for you? Um, I don't want to work again for a while. Um, that's that's partly why I like my job. It gives me time off in the interseason. So I'll probably not work until late January or February. Um, and I just want to go climbing and go to Yosemite, go, go to Spain later on and try and do lots of climbing. <laughs> well, uh, I've, I'll put a link in the description below to John's contact details if you want to hire him as a mountain guide, but he wants to do some work, of course. Oh, so that's I in love, there. I love, I love, I love guiding, there but you go. just so, in its season. <laughs> hit him up if you want an amazing guide. John, thank you for fitting me in today. Right. And I'll see you guys soon.